Hey guys, welcome to AptCode. Let's continue Android Tweet App authentication with Firebase and Spring Boot tutorial. In the first part, we completed the client side authentication, and in this part, let's complete tutorial by developing the backend and developing a complete HTTP request and response flow. So let's go to Spring Initializer site. Let's choose Java and Maven. For the group ID, I am going to change it to com.appcode. For the artifact ID, I am going to add this app code backend. So we need to add dependencies. Let's add Spring Web. Now we can generate. So it gives us a zip with the Maven project. So that's the easiest way to uh, developing a Spring Boot application, right? Let's open it using IntelliJ IDEA. It will take some time to download all the dependencies and their transitive dependencies. Will it get resolved? Let's add Firebase admin SDK dependencies to the POM. There are SDKs for different languages and this chart shows their supported features. So for the Java, let's copy the dependencies uh, which is only one dependency let's copy it and paste it in the POM so there are several ways to initialize the Firebase SDK first of all let's add the dependencies to the POM let's import and for the initializing the SDK, uh, I'm there are several ways actually. So what one one is the setting up an environment variable for the service account file. Other one is loading that one in the application. So that's the one I'm going to use. And also we can use or to refresh token if you want to to initialize the SDK. So there are several ways uh, which includes with the multiple apps. Uh, all those things are included in this documentation. So I'll add a link to this uh, page in the description. So let's create a service account first for the application. Okay, so let's create it. Uh, first of all, we need to select the project. Okay, now uh, Firebase Admin SDK page is appeared, right? So we need to select the language. So it gives us the code we need to paste in the our application, right? So let's generate the private key. We need to keep it safe and don't expose it to other people. Otherwise, your service account may be hacked and your resources may be used by others, right? So let's paste it in the resources in the Spring Boot application, right? So let's change the directory. Right now we need to copy this one and change the path. So let's add that one into the Spring Boot application class, which is the ideal place to add in those kind of stuff. Uh, but basically the initialization stuff, right? So let's copy this one and add it in the application class so we need to resolve the imports let's handle the exception we can use control t and use exception there and we can get instance and check whether that is initialized or not uh, by logging the name of the application right so let's log it we can use uh, slf4j logger which is come from the out of the box with the spring boot 
So we can use logger factory get logger by passing the application class and let's log it the application name Firebase application name. So let's run it. Okay, we got an error uh, with the path. So we need to pass the input stream and file name correctly. Okay, this seems to be working. Uh, I'm using the class and get resource stream. Okay, now it's working. And we initialize Firebase application in Spring Boot. Okay, guys, I'm back in Spring Boot application. So I'm gonna create a hello endpoint and secure it using Firebase authentication and authorization. And I'm going to make it HTTPS because I'm using Android Pi so it doesn't allow us to use clear text communication but uh, the thing is we can bypass it but I'm here going to show you how to use a self-signed certificate and indicate that with Android app so you can do the HTTPS real secure authentication uh, but in the next step what you have to do is replace it with the not self-signed one but the actual one right so let's first create a package called model uh, in there i'm gonna add message class right this only get private string message right so let's create constructor and the getter right so this is a simple entity class to the message and to hold the user I'm going to create something called user and implements the authentication authentication uh, which should come from the spring security right so I'm gonna at the spring security dependency right so i should have spring authentication right and another thing i need to store is something called user record which is come from the firebase right i can make it final and create a constructor to create that one, right okay so let's have the controller endpoint right so let's okay so this is the hello endpoint right so there is no security added here but uh, default basic authentication would work so let's run this one and i'm going to use postman to hit the endpoint Okay, now application is running. I have this password because I added the Spring Security. Okay, we got the message hello, right? So let's go back, go back to the application.
ओके गाइस नाउ वी नीड टू ऐड ऑथेंटिकेशन टोकन होल्डर क्लास सो आई एम गोइंग टू नेम इट फायरबेस ऑथेंटिकेशन टोकन राइट एंड वी नीड टू एक्सटेंड दिस वन यूजिंग एब्स्ट्रैक्ट ऑथेंटिकेशन टोकन राइट एंड इंप्लीमेंट द मेथड सो वी नीड टू ऐड कंस्ट्रक्टर and i'm going to use a field to hold the id token which sent by the android client right so i'm going to create a new constructor right but i need to pass authority so here i'm going to pass null right now we need to add a filter to extract the header information basically authorization header which is sent by the android client it contains a beara token as the this id token right so we can extract that using a filter right so i'm going to add firebase id token filter right and we need to implement the once per request filter okay and we need to implement the do internal filtering method right so i'm going to change these variables to shorter names request response and chain right so now we need to extract the header authorization header and we can keep it as this right now i'm replacing the br part and get the authorization token which is the id token right now we need to get security context holder and set the authentication which is the firebase authentication token and we need to pass this authorization token okay we need to let's change the variable name and continue the chain right okay right now our filter is okay now we need to provide a custom authentication provider right so let's create a package for the providers and insert a class right and we need to implement the authentication provider interface right there's a method called authenticate and supports right so uh the authentication should be assignable from the firebase authentication token right and we can do the authentication here okay so first we need to cast this authentication to the firebase authentication token right because we know that we have set this one in the authentication filter right basically in this filter we have set this authentication to this one firebase authentication token so in the provider we can safely cast this into firebase authentication token right so let's introduce a variable which is token right now we need to verify this one using firebase firebase auth get instant 
and verify ID in token. So in the token we can get okay I missed to add this ID token getter. Now we can add a getter to get the ID token right. In the provider we can use that method to get the ID token right. So we need to surround it try catch. Okay, we got Firebase token. Now we can get this Firebase token get UID, right? So we have user ID. Now Firebase or we can get the user using passing this UID, right? So this is the user record. Now we can create a new user by passing this user. So let's change this to user record and create the new user. Let's add the logger. and log some user details for the moment ok let's return this user but there is something else we need to check we need to check e get error code equals to id token verification because sometimes the token can be revoked right because it was taken from the twitter or the other authentication provider so token can be expired so if that this scenario we get different error code so error code is ID token revoked right so if that the scenario we need to throw new security exception saying that user token has been revoked please sign in again right so basically when this error happens user need to sign in using said provider again from the client side right so else it means something else has happened we can say authentication failed right so there may be another reasons and according to the reason we need to pass or throw uh, specified exception and catch those things in the in the back of client side and uh, do the necessary exception handling things right okay so now we have written this uh, user and the exceptions correctly right so let's format it now we have this firebase authentication token which, which is a abstract authentication token and we have this filter which extract the authorization header and set it in the firebase authentication token and set it as the authentication so basically if client send this id token now it's in the authentication so in the authentication provider what we do is we got this class and we say this is supported to this firebase authentication token class so authentication is passed here because this one is supported to firebase authentication token <laughs> now this authentication is the type of firebase authentication because we have said that this is supported by this class this token right so we can safely cast it and get the uh, firebase auth and verify the token and get the user id accordingly right so i think you got the uh, process how it works and if you don't please uh, put a question in the comment section right 
okay another thing uh, i have forgot to add this parameter which is revoked one so because check revoked we need to check that one because we have handled that one also here right now we need to have a security configuration that wires these all these providers filters and things together so we get authenticated or the, the authorization enabled endpoint right so let's add the package called config and add class called security config right so this is let's add enable web security and add component to this security configuration class right so this should extend web security co configure adapter right so next we need to keep uh, this uh, keep a reference to the authentication provider right so right so let's add and let's add auto wired annotation and we need to pass it enable global method security okay so now we need to implement the method configure security right let's add http security configuration right so it get http add filter before filter is the new firebase id token filter and we need to add the uh, authentication class which is basic authentication filter class right now we can authorize request and matcher to hello right now we can say this is authenticated right okay okay we need to configure another method which is configure the authentication provider right so let's get auth and set authentication provider to the authentication provider right okay now we are good to go right so we have this controller and we have this security configuration and secure enabled and and we have this top filter and it gets set the authentication and we have this provider to provide the authentication right so let's close this all and restart the application and we should get that failed right okay we haven't marked the this provider as a component so let's mark it as a component and run the application again okay now our authentication filter should work so let's send the send the request again okay now we got the authentication failed but it comes as 500 but we should fix that one uh, to 400 error uh, and we'll do that in later video so this one is getting authenticated right now it's checking the authorization header okay so let's make this 
SSLs, uh, SSL enabled. Uh, I'm going to use self sign certificate. So let's create the self sign certificate first. Right. Let's check. We have the key tool. Yes, we have the key tool. Right. So let's create the self sign certificate so we can use that to enable the SSL in the Spring Boot and we'll find out how to deal with that kind of HTTPS self sign HTTPS server communication from the Android side. Okay guys, let's run this command uh, which is I'm um, using key tool to generate the PKCS12 key stop, right? So here is the command look like key tool dash gen key pair alias we need to give a alias to our store and algorithm which is rsa key lag key alg and then the key size and the store size type which is the uh, the default one this one and key store name right uh, which is the app code p12 and the validity uh, this is so uh, likely 10 10 years right and we need to give a password and let's say app code right okay now it should created this app code p12 file right so let's enable these uh, one in the application properties okay guys now we need to change the uh, file the settings file right application properties file we need to supply server ssl key store type which is pkcs12 and key store name which is app code and the password and the alias right actually here we need to pass the path right so uh, this one i earlier created that one right so let's put it to resources okay and get the full path right now we can run this again so it should work under the SSL now we shouldn't get this one okay we got bad request requires tls right so we can put https and send now we didn't get the response because ssl certification is not happening because that is a self-signed certificate so now i'll show you how to get that certificate out of the browser right i'm going to use firefox and copy this url and hit that part right so let's go advance and accept the risk and continue right now we can click this one and go to more information and view certificate right here we got the certificate and we can save this a PEM cert right as a PEM cert that one is very important because we can use this PEM file in the Android application to accept this self sign certificate right so I'm doing this because we are uh, in the later and also from now onwards it Android doesn't support clear text communication and some of the applications and some of the mobile devices are not working when passing bypassing the clear text communication 
for example i have samsung a50 phone uh, it's not working with the clear text passing configurations right so that's why i'm going to uh, show you how to do this correctly right so let's download this app called pem and we can use that in our android application right okay so now basically this part is kind of over right okay guys i'm back in android application so first of all i'm going to uh, use wi-fi to debug my app phone right so now my phone is uh, adb is started in the tcp ip mode now i know uh, my phone ip address right uh, that can check by going to about phone and check the status right now i can adb connect right now i'm in wi-fi mode right so let's try to mirror my android window right okay nice it's working right so this is the record i am using so okay so i think okay nice nice okay it's working great now i can actually uh, minimize these things and keep the application up right now uh, i need to add some dependencies to the application uh, which is i need to call the http request make a http request so for that i'm going to use ok http retrofit and json right so i'll add the dependencies uh, to the gradle file right so let's go to build.gradle file in the module uh, app module right so let's add those things okay so i have added these dependencies right you need to add uh, retrofit 2.1.0 and json and then we need to add retrofit converter json and we need to add retrofit to rx java 2 adapter right so i'm going to use little bit of uh, rx java as well so these five are the dependencies we need to talk to the server right so let's sync the project let's go to the layout okay let's add a button saying say hello to this this layout right okay guys i added this uh, button now we need to create this say hello okay i have created the entry in the strings file now we got this one with say hello button right now let's create a application class and add it to manifest because we need to initialize application and the ok http service in the initialization right so let's add the application class right so let's override the on create earlier i have forgotten to initialize the firebase application so you need to initialize that as well right so let's add this into the manifest right now it's okay we have app code application initialize in the main now we need to have this sign in model to call our service right so in the model i'm going to create a new kotlin class call message right so let's create a data class called message and it will take a message of type string 
okay so this one will be the message passing module right so let's set the api which is apt code service right it will be an interface app code service and a method called say hello and it will take a header authorization that's the header And we need to give the path so this is how we define the API in the retrofit right we have an interface and we have a method and we can use this header annotation to pass header right basically when we call in this method we can pass a header value and it will call this hello endpoint right so to invoke this we need to create a service out of this interface to do that i'm going to use apt code class right so it's very simple right overwrite we need to create a method right it will return at code service so let's have a let in it var for api which is type of app code service so let's call this method now it's correct right now we need to create the ok http client and the retrofit interface so let's use ok http builder class and now we have ok http client now we need to create retrofit To base URL, I'm going to add my IP. That should be changed according to your machine and the because of we are using HTTPS, we need to add that as well. Now we can use this retrofit instance to create the service. Okay. Now we need to have another mutable uh, live data to retrieve the re to get the response for the hello service right so let's create of type message right in the main activity let's add the on click listener to the say hello button
let's create the say hello method function now we can use apt code class but we need to pass the class here right to do that i'm going to change this one to android view model and get app here now we have the access to the app we can access that by get application now we can access api and call say hello method to call say hello method we need to get the firebase auth and get the firebase auth current user let's check for null right now we can fetch the id token from the firebase or and we can pass auto refresh force refresh true this one throws error if the account is disabled deleted or credentials are not longer valid so we need that one right so let's pass true here smart cast is not available okay we can bypass that by null error at call and we can get id token and pass it to the say hello method now we need to add on complete listener we can get the task and check success Now we got the token and we can go to the application and call the say hello method. And one thing I have missed, we need to say we are sending observable of reactive X of type message now we can subscribe for the failure and for the success I added local to error scenario and post the response if we got done. So let's add logs.
now we have added all the necessary logic to the say hello method and we have hello response here we have published hello response that now we can call that method in the activity right I think all is good right now but we need to get the VM correctly because we have now this application here so this view model, model providers of this cannot create that kind of thing to that one we need to pass a factory right so let's create a factory first to create this sign view sign in view model okay guys i have created the sign in view model factory which takes the app code app as argument and this one should implement the view model provider dot factory create method right so we have this override function which returns the sign in view model class as t right so we can use that one in the view model providers of second parameter right you can pass application and cast it to app code because we know it's app code right so now it seems like it should work so let's give it a try okay guys so let's run the application so this should fail first uh, i'm expecting the app to be running uh, the request should fail because we don't specify the ssl certificate resolving here because we have added the self-signed certificate to the back end to the spring boot application but here we didn't tell how to resolve that one because it's a self-signed certificate which is not in the root certificate chains in the android device so we need to add that to the application and i'll show you how to do that one so first of all let's see that may this application is working or not okay actually application is running now so let's give it a try again okay we got the application running so if i press say hello it crashed right so basically we have several errors here okay uh, one thing i have missed we need to provide the converter factory and again i have missed to add the call adapter factory that's why i'm getting that error again so let's try it out again so we need to add call adapter factory which is come from this rx java 2 adapter and the json converter factory so this one convert in the observables and this one convert in the message json message to kotlin types or java types right so i got the application running okay so let's press say hello now we should get something called you know okay network on main thread this is uh, i actually i forgot to create that one because we cannot do the network calls in the main thread so in the sign in view model 
we need to call this say hello method in another thread right so to do it i'm going to use the compose method uh, which is a rx java uh, transformer observable transformer so we can say uh, which what is the thread or the what, what is the way the observable should transform right so let's add the uh, io io scheduler here right okay i have added the method called io scheduler which is observable transformer and what it does it it subscribe on upstream on schedulers io and observe on android scheduler main thread basically it's use schedulers io pool to the network sending upstream and observe on this tree this android main thread right so let's use that io scheduler and let's try it out now only error we should get is the ssl certificate related one hopefully right okay so if you have any question about this uh, what i did uh, up to now please add the comment or send us a message in our fp page or else join our whatsapp group and send a message right so i got the application running okay let's say hello okay we got yes uh, we got failed to get response because we haven't run the application backend application so let's run that one and try it out again okay i think application is running now so let's say hello okay now we got the uh, correct exception we watch we were looking for right so third path uh, exception right yep okay untrusted chain likewise so now now we need to add some code to the um, client to in order to work with the self science certificate so first of all as i told earlier we need to open up firefox and go to right so and go to this connection not secure more information view certificate and download this pm file right so i have downloaded that one and i'm going to add that to the uh, row folder which is in the race row there there's no row folder earlier i am i have created that one right so let's add that uh, pem file here okay guys i have added the apt code pem file here right the downloaded one and now we need to create the client in order to work with self sign certificate right so there is a ssl socket factory method we have two parameters we need to provide trust manager and ssl socket factory so let's create the ssl socket factory and the trust manager okay guys i i'm going to paste some code here because it's kind of lengthy code so here's the code i'll explain how how this works right so we need to first create a key store and i'm going to use key store class which is from the java security right and use get instance and use the default type now we have key store so loading this one we need to load stream and password we can pass a stream and 
pass it right so i'm not going to use that one instead of that one i'm going to use set input and using this bis and using certificate factory i'm going to generate a certificate right and using that certificate we can set an entry in the key store to this certificate right so now the key store is like a this is a kind of empty key store which is contain nothing right so now we need to enter or add the entry to the our certificate to this key store that's what here we are doing now we can access resources because we are in application and you can say open raw resource and app code so this is the pem file right now we can get this input stream and we can pass it to buffered input stream and get the buffered input stream now we can use something called certificate factory uh, comes from java security cert and get this instance of type this x509 x.509 which is the default type Right. now we have the certificate factory now we can use this certificate factory to generate the certificate from the buffered input stream created from the pem file now we have this certificate now we can set or enter that certificate into the key store by using set certificate entry method and we need to pass the host and the certificate right now we can get trust manager factory and get the default algorithm and using this factory we can in initiate that one using the key store now we have a trust manager factory initialized with the key store now what we have to do is get the trust managers from the factory and check whether there is only one trust manager which is not the type of x509 because that's the algorithm or the type we created to we used to create the certificate factory now we have this trust manager Next, we need to pass the SSL socket factory. Okay, guys, I'm going to paste another piece of code which is to create this SSL socket factory. Right now, we need to use SSL context and get the TLS for the HTTPS and we can eat the context using this trust manager now we need to pass this trust manager to the ssl context and init that one right so we can get the socket factory from the ssl context and we can pass the ssl socket factory here right now this is okay now again we need to pass a hostname verifier to verify the hostname right I'm going to check it is the one I'm supposed to talk it right so Kotlin suggests us to use this one and rename this one and remove this one right and also remove out of the parenthesis right uh, this is how host name verifier does what it does is basically check the host name if it is not matching uh, it's not working right so okay now all good so let's run it again Run the application and I'll put a debug point here 
to show you that actually this works right <laughs> the backend authentication right another thing uh, i haven't actually implement the authorization in you know in a role based or the for the specific uh, user privilege right so uh, we'll do that in the next uh, another tutorial uh, for this one i think you can understand how this works right so basically if we can get the user record uh, by the client by the se client sending the token and we can use that token to get a user record and we can check different different things on user record and based on that one we can provide the authorization right so that's another thing we can do lately right okay now application is running i think so let's go to our application and say run the say hello button okay we got a hit to the provider and let's step over okay now we got the user record as i said earlier we can use this user record use email and these providers and the metadata and the custom claims using those things we can actually do the authorization part so i'm not going to do that in this tutorial uh, we'll talk about in in later tutorial right so i'm um, let's try it again i think okay actually we need to uh, show that right in the main activity so let's go to main activity and add vm dot hello response observe on oh, nice this one right observer and we can use if it actually this is not null right so let's toast use toast make text context is this so we can use it dot message and toss dot length long and show right so let's run it again and this time let's disable the debugging okay now application is installing right we got the application running so let's press say hello okay we got the hello message right so this is an a complete tutorial uh, on you know authenticate a user in the client side and send the detail to the back end using spring boot application and validate that in the back end and do the ssl things kind of complete tutorial so if you like this kind of tutorial please subscribe to our channel and put your thoughts in the comment section so we will talk about authorization in later videos so thanks for watching bye bye guys happy coding